Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. Is it rainy where you are? Well, we're live at the HCC TV studios where it's dry and we can't hear the rain because we're below ground right now. But we'll see what happens. They say it's raining outside, cats and dogs, but uh, we'll see what happens in the next few hours. Good to have you with us on this Wednesday. Thanks to those of you watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We appreciate you being here. We're also back on HCC TV. You can join us now uh, at noon, 5, or 10 p.m. So you got three times to watch the uh, the repeat of the show. Uh, my co-host this morning is Charday Campbell. Charday, it's good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, I would say it's always good to be above ground, but that would be too soon for you. <laughs> I know that's kind of a weird thing. Yeah, we're below ground. They actually did with the HCC TV studios, which are very large, cavernous, but we are below ground, but we're dry right now, at least. So that that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, whether you were uh, in a basement or uh, in your home above ground, uh, you can watch us live on Houston Community College District. We're going live on Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget to look for district because there's more than one HCC page for our locations. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram and catch the playback of the show on HCC TV's channel at noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's right. Every day that HCC is in session, of course. So, Charday, stick around. You're going to be talking with this next guest. I'm excited about this next guest because um, uh, she is the owner and chief energetic officer, the CEO of Active Passion LLC. Uh, she's a graduate of HCC Small Business Success ser Series. Linda Hunkin. Linda, welcome to the show. I'm excited to hear about it because you combine, from what I understand, coffee and an active lifestyle. Is that right? 100%. Thanks so much for the warm welcome. And yes, I'm looking forward to the chat later. And um, I think we should combine swimming with the weather that we're having currently and coffee would be a good option. <laughs> Today would be a good day to take up swimming from yes. what I understand outside. All right, Linda, stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Looking forward to hearing from you. You know, um, we've got a, a guest to welcome back to the show. If you didn't know, HCC has one of the largest international student bodies around in the nation, we're talking here. We get students from all across the world. Uh, we've got Dr. Nithi Savanthanathan. He is the HC Director of HCC's International Student Services. Nithi, welcome back to the show. Let's see if we can get you to unmute your mic. Can you unmute your mouth? Yes, mic? I can, sorry. There we go, good to see you, Nithi. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for the kind welcome. Looks like you've got a great show lined up today. And as much as we talk about the weather, it's a cat and dog <laughs> rain outside, yeah. but it's a yeah, blessing. Yeah, that's what I hear. It's, it's, it's supposed blessing. to move through pretty quickly, though. Yeah, we need the rain right now. Nithi, so um, I'm always great, happy to share these stats. I mentioned it briefly, but right now, HCC is the number one in awarding associate degrees to international students amongst two-year institutions. We're also the top five, uh, the top five countries represented are Vietnam, Nigeria, India, China, and Venezuela. Um, why is HCC so attractive to international students, Nithi? You know, one of the beautiful things about Houston is it's a global city. You can see your next speaker, I think she's also a global guest here. It's, it's very important to know that we welcome anyone and everyone here. As you can see, not only HEC, but the city, but also HISD and the community, it is so diverse. The opportunity is unbelievable. So, and the word Houston, it's global. Anyone and everyone knows who we are. We attract the largest international student one, not because of the attraction, but also the services that we provide for right. them to make sure the journey is seamless to them. It's very important. I learned this when I was an F1 student almost 25 years ago. Nobody speaks perfect English. All of us have an accent. Remember that. When I go to certain part of Texas, I do ask, do they speak English? 
<laughs> yeah, we ask it. that too. Sometimes, yeah, I go down to South Texas. I can't understand things either. So you're not alone there, Nithy. I want to ask you, Nithy, you talked about the international student's journey. What does that look like over the last two years and how the COVID pandemic affected our international students who were here? You know, th thank you, Todd. That's a very important uh, journey that we all need to be mindful of. The COVID not only affected us here locally, it is a global pandemic. As of now, we have not talked about, not even engaged the conversation about pandemic. We are still in the pandemic. There are so uneven distribution of vaccine and still in the US and across the world. So that's truly affected not only the international student mobility, but there are other factors also affected, the economic circumstances of families and friends. Unemployment, you can see whatever the terms we use, great resignation in the US. And I'm sure we never hear that in other parts of the world. But remember though, the world is not even. The COVID truly challenged us in every aspect of our life. And also, remember, higher education never gone through this history. Nobody allowed to work virtually. Nobody allowed to teach any class virtually. But there was an initial conversation in the 90s about online offering. But truly now, the COVID truly provided an opportunity that unfolds to all of us about where we are going after the COVID. Don't know when will that be? It's called the new normal. So the right. learning will be very different. But I want to be very mindful, whatever model of offering, remember though, the reason why international students choose Houston Community College is for them to have three experience. I want to clearly spell this out because this is based on research. One, they truly want to experience the local culture. If that's all online, that's not going to make a difference in their journey. Second, they see there is an opportunity to better themselves due to the higher education offering. In some part of the world, they don't have the same infrastructure that we have in Houston or in the United States. And third, they really want to improve themselves and improve their family and the community where they will end up uh, getting the employment or the career journey. These are the three direct, tangible impact they contribute to who we are and what we do every day. Nithi, you and I have talked before about the journey of the international student. Um, one thing you said kind of surprised me is that a lot of the students that come here um, don't necessarily want to stay. They want to go back home and use the knowledge, the degrees, the certifications they've gained here at HCC back at home to better their lives there and the lives of others. Do you still find that being the case? Yes. The reason is today, if you look at in the, in the 21st century, there are global companies around the world. Used to be the global companies were usually in Europe, US, yeah. Canada. Now the landscape has changed a lot. You can see some of the hiring agents are in India, are in Singapore, are in Africa, in Ghana, Nigeria. It all depends on what the opportunity. Remember though, one of the beautiful gifts the international students already gained they already made the biggest sacrifice of their journey, moving here and being flexible to move back to anywhere. They don't have to be in their home country. They follow where the opportunity lies for them. Right. Today, if you can see that some of the GDP of certain countries have changed from the 20th or 19th century to 21st century. And that's a very important database for us to understand that the world is becoming more innovative more opportunity design. Remember though, a nation can only grow to become a better nation if you invest in R&D, in the concept of nation building. And that's the whole reason why the community college was born in 1903, is to provide an opportunity for those who couldn't make it to the college, the universities. And they see, if you see even in the United States, there are more American families are looking at community college as a number one destination yeah. because of the affordability and because of the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, I know you uh, you always have to follow government guidelines and in the wake of COVID, things have changed. Are you getting uh, any new guidelines uh, for this coming academic year in the wake of what's been happening over the last two? 
So far, we have not received any new guidelines. The current guidelines remains the same for all F1 students. It's very interesting dynamic what happened on March 20th where there was a court case. But all that is settled, now it's a history, now you're looking forward. It's a very unique time in the American higher education, especially in the global education or international education where the opportunity is changed, where they allow students due to the pandemic take all online classes, except we are coming for the very first time here to HEC or the US, you have to take one hybrid or face-to-face -face out of the 12 right. credits requirement. We're hoping to get a new guidance, but that guidance I'm not sure will be the same because I've learned from HEC that many of our students are almost, I would say like 60% of our students are now in an online mode. I'm not sure how Homeland Security is going to look at it because if yeah. it's not only HEC, but across the universities and colleges. If that offering is how it's going to change the instructional offering, I really hope whoever the policy makers in Homeland Security will see that as an important data point and guide higher education of how to see we can adjust that changes in the landscape of offering of instruction so that we can prepare our students, not only domestically, but globally too. Nithi Savanthanathan, it's always good to talk to you, uh, Director of HCC's International Student Services. Thanks for joining us again on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Todd. And All I right, Nithi, take the care. The next guest have a great time. Thank you, everyone. Stay dry, by the way. Yes, well, All right. you already. <laughs> Thanks. Everyone. All right, Charday, take it away. Uh, you've got an interesting guest as well. Yes, yes, I do. We're moving on to Linda Hunkin, owner and chief energetic officer of Active Passion. Out, and she is also a graduate of HCC's Small Business Success Series. Thanks for joining us today, Linda. Thanks so much. We're, I mean, we're really looking forward to learning more about your passion for coffee and uh, how you're using that as a catalyst to generate an active lifestyle and products, but but first things first, how did you come up with the title Chief Energetic Officer? I love it. <laughs> well, sure, Dave, if you know me even a little bit, um, people always say to me, where do I get my energy from? And I feel like that's, if you're passionate about something, it's very easy to be energetic about it. Um, and it's actually part of the reason why I came up with the name as well, because I think you can have a passion for something and be passive about it. And that's why I came up with the name Active Passion, so that you actively engage in whatever your passion is. And that can be anything. So for me, um, I bring a lot of energy to everything that I do. It's just, I mean, I think from a tiny little kid, it is the way that I've been. And, um, you know, I thought CEO was boring and it was an opportunity for me to come up with something creative. And I love being creative. So I came up with Chief Energetic Officer and I can't tell you everybody has the same reaction as you do. So uh, I'm delighted that I came up with the name. I, I mean, listen, I work in communications and marketing. The title alone is high key marketing. And I love what you said about people can have a passion and be passive about it. I, that's a tweetable moment. I'm going to have to remember that. Put it, <laughs> put, it, put it on a meme. That That is so, uh, that's such a good mantra. Um, I think it's a great tip even for our students. And so you're actively taking steps towards your passion even when you enroll in school as well. So tell us a little bit more about your company. So, um the way it came to pass is, and it's actually almost five years to the day because it happens to be my birthday today. So five years ago, <laughs> I was heading towards my 50th birthday and I wanted to do something fun and interesting. And it was funny because all my friends said, well, create a bucket list. And I looked at them, I said, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not dying. I'm just turning 50, okay? Um, so I did. I created a thing called the 1550s list. And long story short, Fourth on the list of things that I wanted to do, and I just did a stream of consciousness. I wrote down, find what you love and do it for a living. And I basically um, have the mantra that life's too short to, to drink bad coffee. And I absolutely believe that. And I also love to ride my bicycle, run and do Pilates. 
And I was like, okay, um, I want to help bring this whole uh, energy and active to a community because I also believe that the line between a sedentary lifestyle and um, the end of your life is a very short line. So I wanted to help the community become more active and to um, completely get rid of any barriers to entry. So I was like, well, what can I do? I was like, okay, so coffee is a great catalyst, no matter whether you're a hardcore HIIT person or a yogi or like um, to ride your bike, people generally like to create a community around coffee. So I thought, okay, let me go and see if I'm creating a coffee shop that can generate this energy and enthusiasm for working out and different activities while delivering really good quality coffee is a viable option. So I started, that's when I started my business plan. Wow. Well, first of all, birthday wishes are in order. Happy <laughs> birthday. And to think you started this in a pandemic from a bucket list and, and, and look where it is today. Tell us a little bit about that first year starting in a pandemic. Yeah, so I definitely think that if anybody said to me, what is the one skill you need as an entrepreneur? I would say the number one thing is resilience. Um, and if nothing else last year and certainly going into this year, that has been tried and tested a number of times. So, I mean, obviously when I did my business plan, I had no idea that we were going to be in the middle of a pandemic starting this business. So um, I, you know, opened in October uh, and uh, not last year, the year before, and it was tough. And, um, you know, we opened at a time in Houston where we were only allowed 25% occupancy in any um, restaurant or cafe. And certainly my financial projections didn't include that kind of um, reduction and people were just not going out either. So it, it, I think it made us, first of all, it made me realize that as an entrepreneur, you need to be able to pivot and pivot quickly and do things differently and adjust, you know, on the fly. Um, and so we did that. We, we changed the seating plan. I'm very fortunate, and it was actually a very big reason why I chose the location that I did, was because of the outdoor seating capabilities. So we increased the seating outdoors. We spaced people really well apart. And I think that that helped us a lot because people would come out and sit, even though in smaller numbers, outdoors. Um, and then we just, you know, enforced um, uh, mask wearing, even when the, the state didn't have a clear direction. We just said, you know, as a business, we want to do the thing that doesn't hurt anybody and hopefully helps more than it hurts. And we, so we did some of those kinds of things and then just had to figure out ways to actually um, uh, get to the community and while keeping socially distanced. So it was an interesting channel for uh, challenge for sure. And um, nice to see that we kind of seem to be turning a corner now, which is a breath, breath of fresh air. And I think the community itself has, has embraced us um, in a big way. And actually one of the things that we did was there were some guys from the um, symphony and a play for the ballet as well, that their season got completely shut down. So you talk about, you know, taking uh, lemons and making lemonade. And I had a chat to one of the guys that actually rides bikes with us. And I said, do you guys need a place to play? And he said, well, you know, they're not earning anything. So we actually set up a backyard series. So we had these guys coming because it was outdoors. They were able to play. We took donations only and it helped fund them through a really tough time in their careers as well. And it's something now that we've just continued and our community absolutely loves it. And we have this private little, um, sometimes a string quartet, and actually tonight is the next one in the series. Um, and tonight we will have eight people playing the string um, instruments in the backyard entertaining our customers. Wow. I mean, if that's a phenomenal um, just case study on, on pivoting. And if the pandemic taught us all anything, it's a pandemic and a reliance on caffeine. So you... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> just, to, just to get through the work hours. Well, pivoting is something that all business owners have to learn. Tell us a little bit about what you were able to learn uh, through the Small Business Success Series from HCC. How did it help you? So I was very nervous to sign up for the course at the outset because I'm one of those people that if I commit to something, I really commit to it. 
And I thought, I just don't have the time. There's so much going on, you know, with, with the business and trying to get it up on its feet and staff. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to commit to this, I, I need to do it. And I actually saw, and I can't remember where I saw something where the guy was talking, it was a motivational speech. And he said, you know, when you get onto an airplane and the um, staff to go through the procedures and they tell you the reason why you put your own oxygen mask on first is so that you can help others. And that resonated with me. And I was like, okay, so I need to do something that helps me take a step back from the day to day and to actually get a little bit broader perspective. And I think of all the things that the, the course helped me was actually dedicate the time. Because the good news about HCC is they ask for your commitment and you put it in writing that you will commit to those two days a week for that time dedicated in that time. And I basically put it in my calendar as if it was a hard a meeting appointment, and I made sure that I was available and then I did the whole thing. And so, A, carving out that time to go back to being an entrepreneur rather than a, biz uh, a business, running a business. And I think the two things are very different. You know, when you get engaged in the day-to-day -day running, you kind of get sucked into the, that rather than thinking big picture and figuring out the bigger solutions. So for me, it was very much being exposed to the myriad of uh, presenters that HEC provided, which and fantastic, uh, you know, uh, people that had depth of industry knowledge in each of the different domains, um, and gave me an opportunity to just think a little bit broader and come up with a a SWOT analysis, a mind map on how to grow my business rather than being sucked into the day to day of how am I going to survive? This. Right, right. I mean, and you have survived well. You are certainly a success story for our small business uh, effort here at HCC. And we thank you so much for sharing your story and coming on uh, today. We'll have uh, registration info for our small business success series posted after the show. Thank you so much for your time, Linda. Wishing you the best and success for Active Passion. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Shane. All right. Thanks, Linda and Charday. <clears throat> Very interesting story there. Looking forward to seeing more about her company. Okay. Uh, we got some uh, information we want to get across, some announcements to make, Charday. Um, one of them, very serious subject, food insecurity is a, is a real thing. It's the real deal in Houston. And I think you mentioned last week, Charday, even if you're, you know, not experiencing food insecurity, maybe experiencing being broke, you know, everybody has that situation. This having a chance to get free groceries would allow you to use your money in other places. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so definitely take advantage of the opportunity to uh, use the free groceries to make room in your budget. I mean, financial insecurity goes across different basic needs, including food. Yeah. So the, the dates to register for the April events are up. Um, there's an email that went out on Monday with the link to register and the link will be posted out uh, after the show. Yeah, and this is something we've teamed up with the Houston Food Bank for and food trailers yes, on campus. Absolutely. Register for groceries and uh, you can pick them up. Okay, her funding is ending. Is that really true? I mean, I'm hearing you hear two sides, but I guess the reality is, Charday, the her funding is coming to an end. Yeah, I think you know Linda mentioned it. It's pivoting. Um, so we yeah. we've thought it was going to come to an end a couple of times, but it seems like it's pretty solid around being final. So make sure you take uh, advantage of the opportunity. If you didn't get money. Uh, HERF aid this semester. It is available to those who have not already received aid. The deadline opened a Monday after we came back from spring break. And the, um, the deadline, I mean, the form opened the Monday we came after spring right. break. And the deadline to complete the form is April 1st this week. I promise you it will take 10 seconds for you to fill out that form to make more room in your budget. And if you fill it out and you enroll, you're guaranteed the funds. And these are funds you don't have to pay back. They're part of a grant. So you can use them towards groceries, yes. transportation, 
uh, housing, you know, tuition, anything you need them for. And it's the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund that is in the wake of COVID. Coming to an end, Friday, April 1st. It's April Fool's Day, but this is an April Fool's joke. You need to, to fill out that form and have it turned in by April 1st. Okay, spring transfer affairs, the spring 2022 transfer affairs begin in April as well. See the schedule in the district's Facebook page to find out which fairs are back on campus and in person after the original postponement back in February. Uh, that's opening April 4th. We'll have some information after the show. And there's a math summit happening as well, Charday. Yes, the math department's all faculty summit will have guest speakers and content is scheduled April 9th and virtual from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So our math department is committed to uh, continuously learning themselves. So that's great to hear. Yeah, and uh, congratulations, kudos goes out to um, the HCC's Northwest Student Government Association. They took the lead at the Texas Junior College SGA Convention in Dallas, uh, the Texas Association of Junior Colleges and Technical Schools that includes more than 60 colleges helped HCC Northwest College set a new record. Congratulations to them. They've won some first place awards for song of the year, third place scrapbook of the year, third place video of the year, third place student of the year, and third place advisor of the year, Dominique Brown. You know, Dominique, uh, great I job do. to all of them. That is, yeah. That's yeah, my, I mean, that's great job to all of them. So Absolutely. they had a very- Dominique Brown. Ladarian Prevo and Christy yep. Pick, uh, Pickrell wanted to name them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, you know, congratulations to them. They sent this email out yesterday and I, I sent, sent it to our producer, Melanie. I'm like, let's give them some kudos on the show. So job well done to the Northwest uh, Student Government Association. OK, summer registrations underway, Charday, and there's three important dates uh, that you need to remember for fall registration. Yes, summer registration is ongoing. Fall registration will open for everyone on April 25th, and you will be able to preview the schedule on April 11th. So you can take a look at what classes you need to build the schedule that works for you, your life responsibilities and all that good stuff. So make sure you sign up early. Sign up early. And, uh, and I guess it would be a good time if they haven't filled out that FAFSA to get that done, because those have hard deadlines as well. Well, it, yes, uh, I think the deadline is to really make sure you give enough time for processing. Tip, yeah. We accept applications year round, but you want to make sure that your aid is in place as you're yeah. registering for classes so they're covered. And right. make sure to fill out the 2022-2023 FAFSA for fall financial aid. So make sure you have that. Go to hccs.edu slash apply for more information. Okay, wrapping up today's show, tomorrow we've got Dr. John Swan of the West Houston Institute. He's going to be talking about an innovation fellows program and it's virtual family fun day as well, Charday. Oh, my, make sure I tune in. Yeah, we're going to have the Fort Bend family promise we'll be back to tell us all about some of their fun events as well. Charday, thanks for being here. We're going to see you next week, right? Absolutely. All right. And thanks to all of you for uh, being here this morning. Stay dry. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. live for Up to the Minute.